I'm Carla Lamb. I'm one of the pulmonologists here at the Leahy Clinic. I have a special interest in interventional pulmonology and we have a, a thriving fellowship program and because of that we do uh, a large number of transbronchial needle aspirates and so I'd like to walk you through one of my cases that I'll be seeing today and just give you a brief description of the patient, talk to you a little bit about my strategy of how I determine which procedure would be best for him and then uh, you'll see shortly in the endoscopy suite the actual procedure. So the patient is actually a 60-year-old gentleman with a 20-pack year tobacco history. He was previously diagnosed with a head and neck tumor approximately five years prior to this presentation. And he came back to his primary care physician for a routine follow-up. He really had no symptoms, uh, no cough, no constitutional symptoms. But when he had a repeat CAT scan of the head, neck, and chest area, there were some new lymph nodes in the subcranial area that were pathologically enlarged in the main carina and the left hilum. I've uh, opted to choose a transbronchial or transcranial needle aspiration, rather, uh, and also probably transbronchial needle aspiration using the left main stem bronchus to access that deep subcranial adenopathy with a 19-gauge um, Exelon catheter. The pathology that we'll be attempting to uh, transbronchial needle aspirate to is the, the lower aspect of the subcranial uh, lymph node that was visible on CAT scan. So um, I'm just doing a completion inspection of the entire bronchial tree to make sure there's no occult endobronchial lesions before we lead back to our TBNA. So I'm just going to place this into the working channel next. And because of this patient's adenopathy lends itself more to the left main carina, just below the bifurcation, I will approach um, that aspect of the subcarina from the left main stem. So at this point, I'm coming up to my target, and I'll uh, ask my assistant to place the needle out. No. And then I'm using a technique of seating the needle to the mucosa, I have an assistant to hold it in position, and as I advance the needle into place, I can feel a very strong pop to the mucosa. And then I know that I'm in it, and at this time I apply suction, securing the scope, and I'm just agitating gently back and forth. It can be in fast motions or very slow, deliberate motions um, through the mucosa. And I'll do this for approximately 30 seconds, retrieving sample with suction. And then once that, it's been 30 seconds, I ask my assistant to place the needle in. needle in. I communicate that, she communicates back to me, then I just confirm with the camera that my needle indeed is back in its working sheath, and it is, so as not to cause any damage to the scope. And so I'm just going to pull it through for specimen collection in one straight pull, so as not to damage the needle or the scope. And then I'm just going to wait as the slides are being prepared, and I generally like to pay, take five to six passes to achieve uh, the specimen. And then we'll uh, attempt four other sample sites. Generally in the same vicinity, all looking for the subcranial target. So I like to approach the different angles, but the key is to getting between the inner cartilaginous rings, getting not parallel down the respiratory mucosa, but actually you want to go perpendicular into the lesion in question in order to get ample tissue. And another benefit with this um, needle is that it does have durability. I can make multiple passes without uh, kinking of the, the guide wire and the stylet, which allows me to, to be effective in taking more biopsies. If you have cytopathology on site, then another option is you may have your answer with the first pass. Needle out. Needle out. And again, my main carina, coming down medial to the main carina, and then Pushing against the mucosal lesion, I see a nice entry into the mucosa here, and I'm just okay. agitating with suction. Mm -hmm. Okay, needle in. Needle in. Okay, and then we'll do a final just inspection of the areas and biopsied. Hemostasis has been achieved, and then we've completed okay. the procedure. 
So I've just completed the, the procedure, which is basically a, a transbronchial needle aspirate of the main carina, trying to address the pathology seen on CAT scan of this individual, which is actually a subcranial node, relatively low beneath the subcarina. In this case, I ended up taking about six passes to make sure I had enough cellular material to hopefully make a diagnosis, to rule out cancer. Other options for technique, certainly a 21-gauge needle, a 20-gauge needle for TBNA would be acceptable. Uh, I, by preference, my own personal preference, I'd choose the more histologic needle for the purpose of getting potentially coarse samples of tissue along with the cellular cytology. Um, the patient tolerated the procedure very well. I think topical anesthetic is very important to be uh, generous with that. Good communication with your technicians in order to make sure the needle is indeed in the proper position, that the needle is out when you anticipate the needle to be out, that you clear the working channel of the bronchoscope and never have the needle in the out position while you're pulling the, the needle back through after you've obtained the biopsies. Oftentimes I'm asked why not a median stenoscopy versus a transbronchial needle aspirate or a transcranial needle aspirate. Then I think the things that I look at there is that it's a, a less invasive procedure with a very satisfactory yield for ruling out or ruling in carcinoma. And it allows the patient to go home the same day as well as uh, no exposure to general anesthesia. It's under conscious sedation as we know. Because we can access the, the variety of nodes we can access, the tracheal, paratracheal, anterior tracheal lymph nodes, subcarina, the hilum, um, I think those um, capabilities now make this a very uh, desirable procedure over mediastinoscopy in some cases just because of the accessibility of those lymph nodes in a very non-invasive way. I would recommend starting with the subcranial uh, adenopathy, those who have pathology in the subcranial region, generally measuring at least 1.5 centimeters or greater, and assuring that these are proximally placed underneath the, the main carina. I think you'll find that you'll get uh, uh, a satisfactory yield, or more than a highly satisfactory yield, with that type of lesion in the beginning. It will allow you to become comfortable with the, uh, the, the needle and the, the technique of entering the mucosa safely, and uh, while also making a diagnosis for your patient first and foremost.